Hello, and welcome to the Practice Marketing Podcast, highlighting successful strategies from North America's fastest growing clinics, so you can learn from their wins and power your practice growth. Hi, I'm your host, Neil Trickett, CEO of Practice Promotions, and today's focus, we're going to talk about how to create that wow patient experience. So I'm really happy to have David Lott uh, with us again, physical therapist and owner of Lott Physical Therapy in Corsicana and Fairfield, Texas. Uh, and David has not only been a physical therapist and the co-founder of Lot PT, but he founded it in 2001. So I think that's like 23 years now. Fantastic job uh, building that practice. And David is a master at portraying the patient experience at his clinic. So you got to check out his website at Lot PT. That's with two T's, L O T T P T dot com. Uh, and David has done an amazing job. You got to check out their Google business profile too, because between the two clinics, they've got over 800 online reviews. So he's just done an amazing job of capturing the patient experience at his practices. Um, so definitely check out those those two uh, key things, his website and his Google business pages. So David, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Neil. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, let's get into it here. So, you know, most PTs pride themselves on their quality of care and their way of treating. And, you know, everybody wants to create an amazing experience for their patients, but actually doing it is a lot harder. So, you know, let's say you're a practice owner who wants to make sure, you know, their patient experience is great, but doesn't know where to start. Like, where, where would be a good place to start? Um, I feel like the, the most important part is establishing the connection in the beginning. You know, um, patients come into our environment with a lot of past experiences, some good, some negative. And I think taking the time to, you know, it can take five or 10 minutes. You know, I think during the evaluation period, that very first contact that we have now, I think it actually starts a lot sooner than when they kind of the PT um, experience because it's the office is dealing with them, whoever called to schedule them. So in my organization, what we really try to do is really help the patient, help our office that is when they, from the very beginning to understand, you know, about different patient situations and, and kind of be prepared to help them navigate through this confusing healthcare, like they don't know what a referral means. I, I try to make sure we don't use all those fancy medical worlds. Like we well, have a referral from Dr. Jones and like, it's just crazy. The, the anxiety that sometimes just scheduling patients increase. So we try to really start in the beginning and make sure we connect with them. Where are you from? Where, you know, Oh, you live in so-and-so and trying to even the office staff trying to make some kind of connection to where they feel comfortable from that just before they even get scheduled. We get them scheduled. We get them in. We have a very streamlined process. We try to, I think it's important to prepare them for what's going to happen. So during that kind of initial connect period, we have like on our wall, we have our, our lot PT process and we have actually a graphic that, ex that kind of gives you a visual expectation as to, you know, check in process. The uh, when you prepare for your evaluation, like that vital sign, you know, when, the, when we're asking all these OMT questions, I mean, there's just so many things and I'm not sure that every clinic has had to do this, but like with MIPS and you know, all the government mandated you know, um, outcome measurement tools. I mean, we ask so much information. They've already filled this out 10 different times to 10 different doctors. It's so frustrating. So that, that experience can start off on a negative foot unless you are able to acknowledge the barriers that they had to go through. I think it's important. I always kind of, you know, make a joke about how much paperwork they have to fill out. I try to also explain to them, like, trust me, I've read all your information. And I think it's important as the PT comes in the door that I – demonstrate that I, I know who you are. So, hey, Miss Jones, you know, I see you're here for your left knee. Um, I appreciate you making that long drive from Doney, whatever town they're from. Mm -hmm. So they already kind of get the sense that, um, oh, okay, well, this guy's actually read that information because I think that's important. And so then because we start asking questions and we just jump in and doing the evaluation without that connection first, you'll get some aversions, you'll get some apprehensions, you'll get some like, why is he questioning my pain? So I think it's important that we kind of put them at ease. I, I always ask the first question I ask is, we have, have you had physical therapy here before? Have you ever had PT before? And if they have, I want to know a little bit about their experience, whether it was good or bad. Usually it's good, but sometimes they have some negative experiences. Um, so I think finding out, you know, having those, just taking the time to, to have that conversation in the beginning will help put the patient at ease. And now we can actually have a real conversation about what you're here for. Yeah, um, I like so that because it's about, uh, I like that the focus is don't rush right into just the evaluation of it, right? Like look into right. the the 
the person's background, right? And the person, the way that they've experienced things. And that can, that can tailor the way that the direction that you're going to go. And I also really love that you talk about looking at that patient experience before they walk in the door, right? So it, it is a lot of how, you know, they, they find you online. It's how they experience your front desk. It's the kind of questions and the feeling that they get from that front desk. Cause that really is that critical first contact. Right. Um, right. And I love that you have that whole graphic and every, that kind of process uh, out there because you're, you're so right. It is really confusing if you're a patient and you're not familiar that, that much with the medical. You don't sports. know what to expect. I mean, yeah, it's like, I mean, like, it, it's like forms we go, everywhere you go, you got to fill out like gazillion yeah. you know, paperwork. It's frustrating. Right. And, and if they've had negative experiences at other healthcare facilities, they, they kind of like some people have had so many negative experiences in our current healthcare because no one really listens to them. And so I, I think it's important to hear them first, just kind of tell us a little bit about who they are and what they've gone through. And then I can pick up on those frustrations and maybe and help them realize like, that's not, that's not how we do it. I'm sorry you had to go through that, but that's not how we do things here. We're going to see you on time. It's going to be one-on-one. Um, and we, you know, kind of, and I'll talk a little bit about the cater concept, which is kind of a more structured approach that we've developed um, to help guide that treatment experience. Um, because most of the PTs I get are really good, smart. I mean, they have, they have good interventions. They know what to do. It's just um, some people struggle in different areas. And what I found most consistently through having lots of students and plus having, you know, hundreds of PTs over 25 years, I've seen maybe not hundreds of PTs, but a lot of employees I've seen the biggest part for most is, is that connection part is like knowing how to establish that I am the guide um, to your road to recovery. I'm the one that's going to help you walk down that path. And you can't start that path unless there's some trust. And we can't just expect they're going to walk in the door trusting us because we have a doctor on our, you know, thing. Yeah. So and I think that's a, uh, and you worked with a lot of students. I've worked with a lot of students and, you know, we, we've been students. So I know the, the, the feeling of coming out there and you're like, you're a little overwhelmed. You're trying to like figure out just the, the mechanic, you know, the medical part of it. But, right. uh, you know, one, if we look at it, if we look at the job, the role, right, you've got to get really good at soft skills. And that's how do you relate to people and how do you, you know, get people to do the things that you want them to do for you, right? When it comes to the, the patient care part of it uh, and how do you connect with them? How do you explain things? And then there's the, you know, the technical medical side of it, all your tests and everything that you get, you know, in your mobilization. It's, a, you it's balancing that. that's, yeah, it's yeah. tough. And then if you have someone, I mean, we all have our own personalities, right? Some people are really like, we see the value in soft skills. And usually those are people that are more, um, you know, if you did the different personality scales or they're more of the socializer or, you know, whatever the different terms, it's your leader, but they're the people that are very, they're interested in, in um, meeting your expectations. And, and there's pros and cons to that because some people can be so overly focused on that aspect that they, they, they don't manage their time and balance it to where they're actually getting the real technical information. Um, and then you have the flip side of the people that are really technically um, driven. They like to measure stuff. They want to get every reflex and, and check, you know, all your muscle strength and do every, you know, special test. And the, the, when you, when I read their evaluation, it's like they have done a lot of work here, but what do you, what do we know from this? I mean, who is this patient? What are their goals? Like a, a, a lot of the important stuff can get left out. So it's really helping both sides of the equation of, of those types of patients or PTs to really understand the benefit of both. Because if you're not a social person that loves to, you know, chat and get to know somebody, you may not see value in that. But when I help explain that without that connection, like you can't really guide this, this person is not going to give you all the information. You're going to have to keep pulling them out. And so when I see PT struggle to get information out of their patients, I'm like, well, you haven't connected with them yet. They don't trust you. They don't know who, they don't know that you're the leader yet. Once we establish that, they're going to give you that information. And then you just have to kind of de determine what's the appropriate amount of information I need and details on those different areas to help mm -hmm. guide the treatment. So that's awesome. And, and so you know, kind of, if we take a, a 30,000 foot view here of like, where does that wow experience fall into your business, right? We've got 
uh, public relations at the forefront, right? Which, which is how people think about you out there in the in the world, right? And, and what they start to hear about you and your practice. And then we've got marketing, right? Marketing is really creating that interest, that want for your services, that desire, right? And then we've got the sales aspect, which is actually get people to commit to that service and that outcome that that they want to ultimately have that you can basically provide the service for them. So in in this creating a wow experience, it kind of falls in that marketing and sales world, right? And so it depends on how how that interaction goes to that. And, and what I think you've done really well, David, is looked at that whole process as someone comes in, what is that PR experience like? What is that marketing experience like? What is that sales experience like during the entire patient experience? Um, and it really comes from everyone, like front desk. It comes from your PTs, your PTAs, if your techs in the clinic, right? Your billing right. people, like how they interact with people when it comes to billing questions. So there really has to be that entire process there. And so I know you put a lot of work into this and you mentioned it a little bit here, but can you explain that cater uh, process? So yeah, the cater, C-A-T-E-R, um, stands for connect, assess, treat, educate, and reconnect. And so it, in our efforts, it's probably about uh, 10 years ago, um, some of my lead PTs and I got together. We're actually at San Antonio at combined sections, um, APTA. And so that's the time that we usually have to kind of get together and brainstorm and think of. And, but what we had seen that the consistent, the, our consistent frustration was, you know, our statistically, we look good. We had, I mean, we're, our arrival rates were good. I mean, the cancellation no-show rate was like 4% or less. Um, so we we're doing really good in a lot of areas. But what we were having, we were having to work so hard as the leaders in order to make sure that um, our new PTs or the, the PTs that maybe struggled in certain connection areas, like their, their organization within their treatment um, was all over the place. So we're trying to create continuity between all the PTs to have some kind of semblance of structure with their 40 minute slot, which is what we have. We have 40 minute slots, 12 slots a day. We see patients and we were really consistent and diligent about you know, not double booking. Like today we had one of our providers got sick. So it was, it's very tempting to go that double book phase, like a lot of people. And I'm not judging anybody who does that, but I mean, it's, it's so easy to want to do that, but it's one of the things that we had to set some, some really hard lines on in the beginning one-on-one -on -one, um, and one-on-one -on -one treatment, I think is, is what we have to do in order to maintain what we, what we're trying to go. So even deeper than that was like that patient experience. So what we thought was we kind of got together and I'm sure I was influenced by a lot of stuff I read. Um, so we had actually it was like C-A-T. We did like um, connect, assess, educate, treat. It, but one of my PTs said, hey, cater. Why don't we make it cater? So we moved our uh, treat and educate a little bit, which really you're kind of treating and educating at the same time. So so the big the, the point is, is we established a template that we have in our flow sheets that has connect, assess, treat, educate, reconnect. So we, we want to make sure that during your course of treatment. So I don't tell my PTs how to treat. It's their patient. They use their interventions of choice. So whether they want to do whatever type of technique or manual therapy, but we've, we've been able to really have a consistent message. And that's even in the office of understanding the importance of connection. So that's kind of the, what brought this on was the, the fact that we, we kind of felt like we had figured out like what's the optimal approach to a treatment, the best treatment. And then we just kind of had to put that in a uh, kind of a, uh, standard operating procedure format to where now everybody, we can train on that. So we've been training that for several years now. Um, you know, we also push our core values and our mission statement, which we had had those in years past and a lot of plate clinics have those, but we really never made them a big deal. So we had to kind of go back, revamp those and make sure they were truly who we are, which is, you know, do the right thing, humble confidence, um, exceed expectations. And uh, there's a, I'm going blank on the other ones right now. So, but they're all stuff that really depict like how we want to make sure that we are, are doing every treatment. So that's been helped to kind of create that baseline of care. And so that's made that carryover and continuity so that when they see the other providers, we actually have in the flow sheet under connect. We have like just the information has uh, three grandkids, lives in, you know, likes the farm and ranch, does crocheting. I mean, just little tidbits of information so that if you happen to, you know, there's a scheduling conflict and you get put on somebody else that you haven't seen, they're going to introduce themselves and they're going to quickly let you know by that connect phase, like, Hey, how's your grandkids doing? Or I see you had a, I see you had a, 
graduation last week. Like that, it's a crazy how simple stuff like that. It just immediately mm. goes, oh, okay, she, they know me. And when they feel like you know me, then I don't have to fight. Because otherwise, you, I mean, we all had that patient that you took over from somebody else. And they're like, well, you know, Dr. Dr. Lott did it differently. He, he always did this and this and this. And so you, you feel like the whole session, you're trying to kind of compare yourself or you're trying to win them over. Right. So I think it's important to win them in the beginning. And then now we can actually get the treatment. So I love that. Yeah. I mean, it's such a hard thing sometimes when you have to do coverage or, or um, you know, you want a therapist to take a look at a patient differently. And uh, yeah, you are, you're like starting over from scratch for that connection part. So I love what you and, did there that way you, you, you make some notes about their personal background or something that's of interest to that patient so that it's easy for front desk. It's easy for, um, you know, the, the next therapist that's, that's helping out to know a little bit about well, that. What's interesting I've noticed over the years is I've had so many patients, they tell me about, you know, I want to know, like, I always want to know how you were referred here. And that's another question I ask a lot. It's like, okay, so what got you to physical therapy? Cause that helps me with marketing too, because it helps me figure out what, what are the, what are the barriers to getting in? Well, I went to this doctor and he said, go here and go here. And, but, but what I've, I've found too, is that patients that are most impressed by other doctors, so everybody's got their favorite doctor, you know, like their orthopedic surgeon, he's the best in the world. He was number one in the United States last year for knee replacements. I mean, we know there's not like a really, there's a, there's not some test out there that we, we <laughs> can, can label, but the people that are most impressed by their surgeons are people with some personality. Cause I know all these doctors I've been doing this long enough. I know every one of them and I know who they are. I know how they treat, but some, sometimes some of the best surgeons were, are not really like the, the, the favorites. And I'm thinking this doctor is a lot better, but I know the personality. So I, I can understand why that patient's not impressed with them. So it, it does, it goes a long way to connect, to get that, patient to feel comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. And once you spend the time in the beginning to do that, then you just kind of can build on it. But if you never take the time to do that and it's always rushed and we always, we kind of skip past that part. Yeah. Like we really don't, I don't think we ever really have that patient is they don't see us as their guide. So mm -hmm. I think that's an important part of PT. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I think, you know, if you look at what are we doing during these uh, you know, treatments with patients is we're, we're trying to make progress with a patient, right. In terms of function and strength and all these kind of things. Right. But to the, you know, the patients also taking into their consideration finances, right? Like they're having, mm -hmm. most people have large deductibles. So they're a lot of times paying yeah. cash out of pocket, right. To come see you. Um, so you're, you got to approach it too, from this is where the sales part comes in. Like you're constantly selling them on that. We're making progress and we've got more to do. And this is why you got to come. So it's a sales action uh, that you're doing. Yeah. We hate to think of it that way, but it really is. And sales is really just helping. Right. People. It really comes. And down it's to not that. a bad word. I, I, yeah. I kind of explain sales to my PTs. It's like, if you really believe in us, we're, we're fortunate in the fact that what we're selling, we actually believe in, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, to me, sales is not a bad word when you're actually doing something very valuable for somebody. And most people who sell a product, whether it's health or a you know physical product, like if there's value to that, then you can get your heart behind it and you're passionate about it. And I think that's easy to do in our profession. And I think about one patient that's probably, this was 15 years ago, I had this guy and it was probably a big part of, I've had a lot of aha moments, but I, I was going to have this guy was a, he got shipped over to my schedule last minute, but I heard him up front filling out his paperwork and he was basically complaining about his $60 copay or something. It was a crazy copay. And basically just said, I'm, I don't know why the doctor even sent me here. I'm going to come one time. This is crazy. He was very frustrated. Which, so I was glad I got him because I like those patients. So we sit down in there in my office. First thing I did was just want to connect with him. I said, this is before Cater had come into my mind. But at that time, I really recognized the value of like, we have to clear the air before we can move on. Because I could have jumped in and checking out that knee or shoulder, whatever it was. But he wasn't ready yet. Mm -hmm. So I asked him, so where are you from? What do you do? You know, have, you know, what's your, have you had PT? But I could just tell very one answer, you know, he's like talking to a teenage kid. Yes. Mm -hmm, yep. No. I mean, it's like, we're not having a conversation. And so finally I just looked at him. I said, Hey, here's the deal. I want to help you. I really do. I can't help you uh, unless we work together. And that's when he went into his copay and his issues. And I said, here, I have a lot of ideas. I think that can help you a lot. I said, but if, if it's not worth it to you, then, I mean, you don't have, you're not, you're, this is your, I'm here to help you. I'm, I'm working for you right now. So if you tell me this is your only visit, 
that's fine. I'll give you some things I think could be helpful. If you choose to do them, I think they can be beneficial. If you don't, that's all up to you. And it's just his whole tone changed because what I did is I put him in the driver's seat mm -hmm. um, before he was being told what to do. And a lot of people don't present that. I don't like to be necessarily told what to do unless somebody can explain to me why it's going to be beneficial. But nobody had taken the time to do that. They said, go to physical therapy. He didn't know what physical therapy was. He'd been had some really negative healthcare experiences. So he just assumed it's the next place I go sit and wait for 45 minutes. They see me for five minutes and then I'm out the door. But during that evaluation, I was able to go into more detail of what we do and how we can help him. And so um, when I got time to for frequency, you know, and, and duration, I, I felt like well, this is going to be where we're going to have a challenge. And I said, in a perfect world, if this were free, I would recommend we do three times a week for six weeks because we've got to really work on calming your pain down first. And we're going to get into movement. We're going to help restore their mobility. Once we get that going, we'll know we, we can then get into the strength part, which is going to help you fix this issue and not have to deal with just patching it every now and then with these injections or whatever. And um, he looked at me and said, well, we could do it every day if we want to. And, um, and I realized then I had him. And so, and that wasn't my goal to like trick him. It was just, I wanted him on, on our team because we right. had to be on the same team. And so he went back up to the front office and when he left, they all came out I'm like, what did you say to that guy? Cause he was a completely <laughs> different person. Yeah. But all I did was I listened to him. Mm -hmm. And that's what patients really want. They want to be listened to and then explain to them in a very simple way for him to understand. Our goal is to help you get better through these means because the concept for some people of when they're in pain and you say, go to physical therapy, like that's crazy to them because they're depending on their expectation of physical therapy. A lot of people think of PT as exercise, strengthening machines, you know, something intense. So it really was just a matter of let's figure that. Let me explain to you how this process works. And if you want to be a part of this, we'd love to have you. If not, it's, it's your, you own your body. You can control it. And then went, so I put him in the driver's seat and then it went great. This guy's done video testimonials for me. He's, he's a it. walking bill. He's a walking billboard now. <laughs> cool. Really cool dude. So anyway. I love it. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, you got that person that he, people don't buy on logic, right? They buy an emotion. And so you yeah. created that you, you put the effort into making sure that you were aligned first, right. And connected first, and then everything else flowed from there. So that, that's a wonderful example. And so, you know, with that cater philosophy there, uh, imagine that you break it out a little bit and is there certain nuances to each point that right. you go over? So when what we do it? when we train it, what we have is we have, we kind of have in that 40 minute slot, we try to create a kind of a timeline. So five minutes to connect, and I don't quote me on this, but it may be like, you know, 10, 15 minute assess or 10 minute assess. And then you do your uh, treatment phase and then you, re, you know, educate re, and, and you're kind of doing this together. So I, you know, it could be argued that that's not exactly how it's done. But the concept is that we're not missing any of those um, parts of it. So could that connection part? And then when I when I've trained this, we have a you know, PowerPoint we go through and we, we give them ideas on how to connect. But the other thing, it's just like with a patient, if you don't explain to your PTs why this is valuable to them, they're not going to do it. So mm -hmm. we we had to really go into this is why this is important, because if you connect with somebody and, and we kind of point out like those examples, because everybody's had that, that nightmare patient example where you walk yeah. in, they don't want to be here. I'm like, well, here's and I give them I've had quite a few stories about, you know, people that have been like that. But when they leave, they're excited because I was able to listen to them and answer their and kind of address their their aversions to seeking PT and then help them to know we're on your side. Um, and here's kind of in a, in, and you have to, once you know things well enough, you can break it down in a very simple way of like the components of how you're going to get better. So mm -hmm. that's that connect part. And then the, you know, assess part. So that, that would be like, obviously during evaluation, you're going to evaluate and assess, but really the follow-up treatment is where it's so important because we kind of quit assessing some places do, uh, when that patient comes in, they get shuffled around. And if you don't have someone, if you don't have a, a system in place that we, you know, connect with them, but then we're going to reassess real quick because I want to know what your irritability level is today. I want to know who you are today. And I, mm -hmm. I explain to the patients, like when you come every day, you could be a different person because the irritability levels will change quite a bit. So we assess and then we do our treatment interventions, which is the important part of it. We're really pressed with treatments that we're explaining what we're doing and how it's going to help them. Because that's really what patients want to know is they want to know, how are you going to help me? They're not impressed by your big words or you explaining this new, um, you know, anterior posterior technique that's going to get it. I explain that stuff to people when I pick up on they're interested in that information. 
but they were always talking about what we're doing and how it's going to help them throughout because that also adds that value to it. Mm -hmm. And then the education is helping, you know, whether it's explaining pain and, you know, the symptoms and how you can change them. But then at the very end, it's so crucial that when, and just like I did every patient this morning and I, every time I did, I thought about this podcast because I listened to my PTs doing it, but that reconnect part, which is, Hey, Neil, um, how are you feeling right now? Or are you, you know, usually I don't ask, how are you feeling? I usually it's like, are you getting better is my favorite question because that's a yes or no. I mean, that you can't, but um, I like at the very end to say, you know, when do we see you again? And then here's what we're going to work on next time. So I, I want to make sure that they know when their next appointment is also that they're scheduled. Um, I want to know what time it is. And I ask them details because I want to make sure they don't miss that appointment. And if they don't, if they don't, not sure, I pull it up on my computer and I'll tell them, oh, okay, you're Wednesday at 10 a.m. So make sure next time, here's what we're going to focus on. And I give them something to look forward to of your, like my last patient was a sciatic, a type patient who's very active and very frustrated with, you know, the last three months of life has trained dramatically, but she's on that upward trend. So just kind of reinforcing, here's where we are right now. We're in the movement phase. We're going to try to accomplish the extension, get that moving a little bit better. And then our goal the next week or two is to work into your strength phase and get you back to on that Peloton at home and like make it personal for them so that they kind of understand the time frame because that's another thing. If we don't do that, they don't really know where they are on that road to recovery. Um, they just, they feel like we're kind of spinning around here or it's the you know farmer rancher guy that's, his idea of getting better is strength, strength, strength. But yeah, we're doing all these stretching stuff. If you don't explain why the value, why that's valuable, and because I, I point that out, I know right now we're doing a lot of it seems like dinky exercises, Neil. But our goal is restore mobility, and when I can get that hip pain free in range with overpressure in all directions, we're ready for strength. So I kind of give them some guidelines as to you know here's what when we reach this goal, we get to go to this goal. So now they're engaged and kind of like they understand the process better. So. It takes time to do that, but you can do that oftentimes while you're doing your treatment that's billable. So I think yeah. most people, a lot of a lot of people may have feel like, well, how do you connect? I can't bill for that. Like you connect while you're. I mean, to, I don't know how you don't connect. I mean, so without with for a, for an actual productive treatment. So yeah, that that's excellent. And I, what I think you've done really well is that you've you've systematized the experience for the patient, right? And how you want, th and, and you get, I mean, this is where I think um, I've seen in clinics is that typically you're like, you know, you come in, you you maybe hire a seasoned PT, right? It's just like, Hey, you're going to have this many patients and just, this is kind of how we do things and then just go at it. Right. But I think what you've done really well is that you kind of, you say, Hey, here's the, ex here's how we run the treatment. Yeah. Here's how we run the evaluation. Do what you want within these little things, but here's kind yeah. of the core concept of that time slot within that evaluation or that treatment. And I, th I think that's something that a lot of clinics can take away from this is that what do you, how do you have things structured in a way that's uh, unified, right? So that the patient, no matter who they see, has that same, you know, everybody's going to have a little nuance, but you have that same approach during the entire treatment process. I really love that. And, so, and, and getting that concept to particularly seasoned PTs. I mean, I don't think it's a hard concept because everything in the cater concept is, is stuff we agree. Doesn't always happen within your time frame because we prioritize what we think is important. So some of that, if I have a new grad that comes on, those guys are usually pretty easy. They're excited because they, they want some guidance. You know, they mm -hmm. want that, that independence within treatment. But this, again, it's not handcuffing them to treat a certain way. It's just make sure you get all these boxes checked off, connect, assess, treat, educate, reconnect. That's not that complicated. And you do whatever you want within that time frame. Now, a seasoned PT that comes in, I would be the worst person to ever train if I were to go work at another clinic because I've been ingrained in a certain, you know, mm -hmm. philosophy of treatment. So I would probably be a little less open minded. But So I think we have to expect that. So what I do if I have somebody this season that comes in, I just have a conversation and say, hey, you know, this is what we've really found to be very valuable in order to make sure that the patient experience is optimal. Um, and I want you to look over this. And if you have some suggestions or things, because I know you have a lot of experience, like I would love to get your feedback on this and see how we can get it better. So that's how my way of putting them in the driver's seat. And and I'm, I'm being honest because I they probably do have some good, but I, no one's read that yet that hasn't gone, oh, this is crap. Mm -hmm. Like they're like, oh, this is pretty cool. But yeah, you've got to right. get you have to get them on board with it because otherwise they feel like they're being dictated and what to do. 
And that's definitely not it. It's just like we have recognized that these are the most valuable aspects of a of the treatment. And we have to make sure they're incorporated some way into while you're working your magic. Because some of your best PTs at your clinics have these incredible clinical skills, manual skills, and they can really help patients. But if they don't have the ability to have that human side, mm-hmm. like their their NPS scores are low. They, they don't get the Google reviews. Like they're just, the perception of care is is not is lost sometimes when that technical side is not explained or you don't connect and make that patient a part of the treatment versus them just laying down and we do a bunch of stuff I'm like oh how do you feel now oh so much better okay good see ya do you want more freedom in your clinic then you need to work on your business not just in it the top practice owners know that they need a marketing system that consistently attracts patients from the internet And at Practice Promotions, we've helped hundreds of practice owners skyrocket to the top of Google and get more new patients from online. Go to practicepromotions.net slash kit to get our free practice marketing sample kit. It includes all our digital marketing tips and tricks that will get you new patients from Google. That's practicepromotions.net slash kit, K-I-T, for a free marketing kit. And now back to the show. Yeah. And so, you know, obviously you've worked hard to create this good patient experience, but has there been experiences in the past where you've, you've gone wrong on, on the patient experience part of it? Oh, never. I've always been perfect. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean that's, that's the, the benefit of doing something for 25 years is like, I, I, I'm my own worst critic, you know, I mean, I have, can I hyper analyze everything I've done wrong my entire life? So I've, yes, I, I learned so much from those negative experiences. Like, you know, the NPS scores, um, I'll be, it's very rare that I see a negative one, but if we do see one, man, we hyper focus on that. And then usually we find out nine, 99.9% of the time we have a low NPS score and, and we investigate that. Like if you give me a low NPS, and I'm assuming everybody knows what that net motor score, mm-hmm. um, most people are aware of what those are now. And they're not perfect, but they, they're worthy of exploring. So if you give me anything lower than a nine, we're going to talk to you next time you come in. Neil, hey, um, how's everything going? Are we getting better? Um, oh, man, I'm great. I'm wonderful. Yeah. Um, so you've been getting some emails from us. Um, we just like to follow up on how you're doing. Yeah, yeah, I think I've got some emails. Yeah, well, we just got one back that did ask you to kind of rate how you, how you, what your experience is like. And what can we do to get a 10 from Neil? What is it? What do we need to do differently? So we try to approach it like, how can we improve versus why did you give me a seven? Like, I don't want to make it confrontational. I'm like, how can we be better? And then what we find out a lot of times, oh, yeah, I remember feeling that out. I, I, I yeah, yeah. And then I'll be like, Neil, yeah, you, you gave us a seven, man. I want to, I want a 10. What can I do to, what, where can we improve? And usually it's, it's um, insurance information. It's, there's something else going on. But again, if you don't connect with somebody, you don't know that stuff. Mm-hmm. So you have to connect in the beginning. So when you establish that in the beginning, it's not a problem. So I've learned a ton of from those, those negative um, NPS scores, but also just patient experiences. You know, I, I try, I, I think I'm funny sometimes and my sense of humor can be misunderstood. So I had to work on my sarcastic, you know, sense of humor can get me in trouble. But <laughs> I think the, the big thing is just learning from all those experience. But I mean, basically the culmination of all those years of making those mistakes really created that cater concept to where we can make sure that every patient experience is good. And if it's not, if, if a patient's struggling or not happy with something that's going on at lot physical therapy, like we can pick that up a real quick. Cause if you're not having a conversation about it, you're not going to ever fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I can... And and I think, you know, the point you brought up there too, is that there, there tends to be a lot of, and, and you could provide the greatest care in the world, but there can be that frustration around, insurance issues right or or billing or financial issues so i think it's really important to have a lot of training with your front desk have a lot of training with your your you know if you have a billing coordinator or someone in the office that's doing like pre-authorizations things like that someone that can you know be pleasant and really nice with the patient when they're explaining the the insurance benefits right and what's what's going to be covered what's not going to be covered and you know, just so that there's, there's exactly. a good handling at the beginning, because that can really, that can be hard to overcome in therapy, right? When you're trying to actually treat the patient. And, and the office tends to get beat up a lot more than we do, because that's where the complaining goes. And yeah. so what happens is the office can get desensitized to that and they become robots. So if you call an office, uh, any medical office and, you know, 90% of them are going to, 
almost sound robotic and they because they've been beat up on the phone so much they're frustrated mm -hmm. they don't have the support from the owners and staff typically and so um we have to really support them too and one of the things i have it's called how to deal with angry patients um and it's it's basically just a little training video that's kind of archaic but it's really funny because it, it kind of helps point out the fact that most people that are, are upset or complaining um they just want to be heard they like they want you to just listen like i can't fix the fact i can tell you that like, i'm sorry you have a 45 dollars copay maybe next year when you sign up for your insurance plans like get the better one you know that's what you want to just say well <laughs> you got a 45 dollars copay because you chose the cheapest premium yeah or the, che the lowest rate so but that doesn't really that doesn't accomplish the goal of their frustration. So just listening to a patient, acknowledging, showing some empathy, um, taking the time. And then also, I think the frame of mind, like I, I remember years ago, I'd have one of my receptionists would come in the door before I see a next patient say, hey, uh, Neil is your next patient. And, oh my God, he's tough. Like just something like that. Just nothing too bad, but negative. And I had to tell her, I, I don't want to know that. Like I don't, I don't, and the fact that you even think like that, I don't like that. So I had explained to him, you, when patients come in, they're not feeling good. Their life is not in, in the order that they like. They're, they're struggling with a lot of things. They've got financial issues sometimes. They're having to, to, to stop their job to come see us. Like their life is not in a great place. So you got to give them a little grace um, when they come in and they're a little frustrated. Now, we only, we're not going to take any negative or, or excessively angry things like that. We always yeah, come get me. But most of those things can be resolved really quickly with just listening, being empathetic. I'm sorry to hear that you have a large copay. I'm sure I know they can help you though. Um, but make sure to mention that to your, you know, your therapist. So mm -hmm. I think there's, there's easy ways to get around that. They can help. Yeah. Now you've got uh, two locations here and obviously you can't be in two places at once. So we well, got yeah, uh, and our third one starting September. So oh, that's right. Yeah. Venice, congratulations Venice. on that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank so uh, I'm curious for you, like, how do you make sure that that patient experience is consistent across the locations, even when you're not there? So um, a lot of it's because I have really smart people working for me, a lot smarter than me. I, I, that's one thing I did learn young is I'm very smart. My wife's a lot smarter than me. She's <laughs> Lisa's my business. She's the she knows she does all the finance stuff. I'm the one that comes up with ideas, and then I have a lot of smart people that make those happen. Um, so we have really in the last two years, we we I call it we we're we're trying to be a grown up business now. We're trying to be big boy business, and meaning what I mean by it, we're actually having meetings. Um, we, we came across the book traction, which was really helpful. And I think I may have mentioned this to you before, but that really helped kind of get us an idea of like, what is a, what does the meeting cadence need to look like? Mm -hmm. And so as we expanded, I mean, we're seeing, um, on average week, we see about 900 patients a week between the two clinics. So, you know, when people say they have, you know, 10 clinics, well, if they're satellite clinics, you're only seeing, you know, so many, I mean, 900 patients is you know, like we have 18 PTs. So it's a lot to keep up with. Um, and, and that is a great question on how do you do it in the way that I've realized the best way to do it. It wasn't like I realized this many people ahead of me did is you have to train your staff. You have to establish like, who are, who do you want to be? I mean, that, I think that's number one. It's like, who, who are we? And that's so about two years ago, we had a really, we did an offsite, um, executive with all my directors. We got six and, um, office, uh, facilities director. My wife is a CFO, uh, my PT directors. We got together and we like, what is it? What's working? What's not working? And that's when we really kind of like we fully implemented the cater concept. We, we kind of looked at, you know, how are we training our office staff? And we also started using um, a, a platform, web, web based platform called Bloom Growth. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a mm -hmm. business platform. And what it does is it allows you to create issues. So basically, it's a platform you can go to. And um, if I have some issues, if I see that somebody's not following, like our aide the other day was not using the pain scale like, the way I felt like it should be. I, I like the ones that's got the faces and explains the you know names and says saying, what's your pain on a scale from zero to 10? Zero is no pain, 10 is emergency spring pain. Like I hate that because, you know, some people don't care, but you're not really getting a real number. So just little details like that. When I hear that, like I put that on the issue list. So we have weekly director meetings. And then we're able to bring up these issues and then everybody can kind of do, to cone in and then we're able to assign that that need to a very specific person. So that's one way. But the big way is just having directors that we meet once a week. Um, we have our directors meeting, our shareholders meeting, our marketing meeting. We have all these meetings that not everybody's involved in. But at our directors meeting, we make sure that we're 
aligning, we're, we're looking at our metrics. That's a big part of it too. You have to have certain metrics like our arrival rate. Um, what are the other ones? Our NPS scores. Um, you know, there's about um, how many new evals we have that week. So we're looking, we have all these metrics that help us kind of see the health, the, the, the current state of health for your business. And so we, and we also try to have a number for each position, meaning a metric for each position, like for my PTs, most of them have multiple metrics, but like for your PTs, how do we, how do you know if your PTs doing good? Well, you look, we look at their NPS scores, their arrival rate, um, which is kind of like the cancellation no-show rates. So we can look and see like, um, you know, their units per hour or units per visit, what they're billing. And, you know, our goal with pushing that is not so much about like, we're trying to make you bill more money to make more money. It's just like, are you billing for your time? Like when you see people that are billing like a short visit every time, like, well, did you spend that time with that patient? That's concerning. Like you should spend the entire session with them. Mm -hmm. So all those metrics allow us to have a weekly snapshot of the health of the business so that those little small items can be cleaned up and taken care of by the right person. Cause I don't need to be the one that goes in and fixes all the problems because I don't, right. I don't have that relationship with those different departments that other people do. So the big, the big answer is also working on our, um, our SOPs. So our standard operating procedures, making sure for every aspect of lot physical therapy, we have it very clearly stated and we're, we haven't completely completed that process, but we have it really down. I mean, our SOPs are huge. And, um, my Seth Watson is my, uh, PT director. He's, he's kind of, the, he's the integrator. Um, if you're familiar with that term, I'm the visionary. So mm -hmm. I, I'm the, huh, we should do this. And he's like, Hmm, that sounds good. But you're gonna, in order to do that, you're going to have to do this, 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 and this. And then I'm like, Oh, never mind. But every now and then I'll have every now and then I'll have a good idea. So I, yeah. I'm always spitting out ideas, and that's what that's what's driven the company up until really the last part, the last few years. But that drive has also been kind of chaotic because if you have the leader, it's always thinking of new things, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm shifting over here, my attention goes over here. Like I now have people that that we have a really great relationship where even though I'm the owner and I'm the founder of it. Like I have other people that I, I respect their feedback. I want them to be able to tell me when, you know, that's, that's not going to work. So I think that's the, that's the only way you can open up multiple satellite facilities and really have that continuity of care if that's your focus. But, cause I think sometimes the goal with opening more clinics for some people might not necessarily be about, you know, they, they kind of miss the, the deep part of it. It's like, I want this to be quality, you know, like represent who we are and not mm -hmm. lose that. And anytime you expand, you're going to lose that to some degree. And it's not going to be the exact same thing in Corsicana and Fairfield and Ennis. Yeah. But we have at least created some guidelines to kind of keep us close to it. We have to pay more. You have to like, like you're doing, right? You have to pay more attention to it. You have to put more effort into the standard operating procedures to keep that level of care, right? That you, or the experience level that you have at that, at your main location, right? And I think, um, you know, good companies that grow, are able to do that, right? They're able to make that more of a standard operating procedure to have a similar type patient experience and keep that a happening across those multiple locations. And I think where you see um, clinics that underperform is typically where they they struggle with that um, standardization oh, yeah. of the patient experience. Well, and they're growing. And the, I think the, the confusing part for a lot of PT clinics is the fact that the I think physical therapy has definitely become more, uh, there's a greater awareness of the benefits of it. At least I feel like in our area, Texas mm -hmm. area, maybe, uh, and, and maybe it's nationally, I just don't know what this, I haven't looked at the statistics, but there's a huge need of, of physical therapy. So sometimes when you have a three week long waiting list, you know, at your clinic, like a lot of clinics do, and they assume they were killing it. We must be really good. But the, the reality is it's not necessarily that they're doing that great of a job at that clinic. It's just that the, there's such a need. It's just it's the it, it's such a high and high demand. But what you do with those people on that three week waiting list, when you would treat them and evaluate them, that's going to determine are they going to be reactivated patients. And, you know, if you look at our reactivation rate with our patients, it's 60 percent. Wow. I'm in a town great. Fairfield. So Fairfield, the clinic I'm in right now, population 3000. Mm -hmm. So super small town. Within 30 mile radius, we've got a bunch of other little small towns and we see 90 to, 90 to 100 patients a week, a day, of 90, 90 patients a day here, That's uh, awesome. which is 
which is pretty crazy for a low 3000 population town. And it wouldn't mm -hmm. happen unless you had that high of a reactivation rate. So when we have that patient experience, when they come in the very first time and never had physical therapy, mm -hmm. we're going to listen, we're going to listen to all their other issues. And I think that's a question you're going to ask me a little bit later, as far as like, when you hear how we can help them in other areas, we've gotten, we miss that as PTs when I'm sitting here working on your neck and you're talking about your knees killing you and you're going to chiropractor, um, at, you know, and tomorrow for your knee. I've heard people just sit on that and like that's, and I'm going, wait a minute, wait, wait, we treat knees, you know, let's, let me take a quick look at your knee. So taking every opportunity to engage that patient and market what we do is so important. I know a patient with vertigo, you know, they've had vertigo for three months, but they're here for their neck. Like we should screen that out. Mm -hmm. So we have to be listening on how we can help people. Definitely. And so as you've done a lot with your patient experience internally, how have you incorporated that as part of your marketing and your branding? Um, yeah. Yeah. So ask, I'm just asking that question again. So whoops. yeah. So the, you've spent a lot of effort on your um, marketing, sorry, your patient experience uh, internally. And so how have you uh, used that to be part of your marketing and your branding? I think that's, you know, that's kind of been an evolving thing. And, and as we've really fine tuned who we are, it's a question we had. Kind of, and we were growing so fast uh, a few years ago, kind of really post COVID, like right after COVID, it was, it was kind of like we had this down spell. So when everything was on lockdown and then when they, they everybody came out of the woodwork. So it was exciting because we were growing and we had, I mean, we were seeing, we had patient wait, waiting, we had to hire a bunch of people. And so, but we, we had to kind of like define who we are and that's really what prompted us to kind of define our, our SOPs and all that. So we had to get consistent branding and our messaging across. So I think a big part of it is just it, helping our office and our people and everyone know like they're, they're, they're involved in marketing as well. And we, I try to keep them up to date on the marketing part on how we're explaining our services and what we do. Um, so there's a consistent theme with that. Um, there's no surprises, um, understanding why it's important to kind of get people to do like, you know, our Google reviews or um, video testimonials to get them excited about that. Um, listening to uh, that continuity of care has been important of like making sure that we have a consistent um, you know, process across the board. I think that's, those have been the main things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I want to just say that, you know, looking at your website, I know our team working with you, that you just do an amazing job of telling that story from within the clinic, that patient experience and the, you know, great videos, great pictures, like you put effort into that. And it just makes the marketing and the branding that much easier. You're able to, to really show what things are really like inside of the clinic. So, you know, being able to put those uh, imagery and those success stories and having tons of reviews because you put so much effort into your Google reviews, like that's all your ammo for your marketing yeah. and it's what makes it work so well. Um, and so what, what difference um, have you found that putting that focus on that patient experience and, and creating that, that visual story, like through your website, through your reviews online, everything like that, like what has that done to help you attract new patients and also reactivate past patients? I think we've, we've gotten better at the messaging to patients because um in my in my non-marketing savvy brain, um, I just couldn't understand why you wouldn't put a billboard up with having all your PTs and their names and that they were OCS and McKinsey, you know, all these credentials. Like I, I, I used to argue with this with the people that would help us with marketing in the past. Like I just didn't understand like why don't they see value in that? But then I I had a realization at one point, finally after several years, patients don't care about that. Um they, they really don't. They don't care about it. They don't know what it means. They're not impressed. So we're, the only person you're impressing is maybe the other PT that has OCS and like, oh, that's cool. But most most PTs aren't even impressed. So I think it was really getting better about with our social media and our posting is just showing real stuff. Like I might show my PTs with their kids on the weekend in the mud, working in their yard, got their chickens out there. And, you know, we're in the country. So a lot of it's just country stuff we do. Um, but people relate to that. And they, they see that these are like me. They, they, we have a lot in common, so I trust them, and that makes it easier. Um, but also, like, with the video testimonials and the Google reviews and the, the things, not focusing so much on 
you know, Dr. Lott is so great. His mobilization techniques on my left shoulder have really reduced my impingement. Who cares? No one's going to read that, you know, but to tell the story of, you know, hey, they're the most caring kind. Uh, when I went in my left shoulder, I couldn't raise it and I couldn't lift my grandkids. And it was very challenging taking care of my disabled husband. But after, you know, a time when physical therapy, they helped me so much. Um, and now I can raise my arm and lift my grandkids. Like, that's what people want to hear. They want to know the story. Like, how did how did you get better? Not not the rest. Of, they want to know, did you bake the cake or not? We kind of think of, I think of our goals, like in terms of like, I, I want to bake this cake. And to bake a cake, you have all these recipes. And, and you can, if you mix that stuff up a little bit, maybe it won't mess it up too much. But you have to stay pretty consistent with the ingredients to make it the cake you want. Um, but to help people not get logged down, we, we used to spend too much time explaining the ingredients. I'm just like, we're going to bake you a wonderful cake here. You're going to be better. I don't know if that analogy makes any sense to anybody. It does. But, it does. Yeah. We don't really care about the recipe or the ingredients that much, right? You just want the, uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> our message, our messaging changed, like my billboards, I, I still believe. And I think every demographic or every geographical location is a little different on what works, whatnot. But at small town, you put a billboard up. You know that it's it's almost like it validates you have a real business because I it's so funny people are like oh you have four billboards I saw over and like you know um, but what we put on them is important it's not lot physical therapy practice of the year 2011 you know whatever that we were you know a long time ago that were some accolades that that that's about us like they don't care about us. they want to how am I gonna so my picture is a uh, you know grandpa with his granddaughter up in the air. And live, it, live your best life, come to lots. I mean, it's just like something that they can resonate to, um, to see, like, I know I can go there and I'm going to get help. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, again, a messaging that's more simple, that's more streamlined, more consistent um, with that. So patients really understand, like, this is a safe place to come where we can help you. Mm -hmm. Love it. And so how has that also, uh, we, you know, that's obviously helped you from new patient reactivation and the growth of your clinic. How's it also impacted your hiring efforts, being able to, you know, showcase more yeah. patient experience and what you do for it? That's a great question. Um, and that's something, and again, this last couple of years has been a really big uh, game changer because we've had to, because we've, we kind of slowly grew organically in the past. We get a lot of students to come in, so students are exposed to our environment, and um, we we have a pretty good, probably fifty percent of the students we have end up working for us because they just they love it. And we're we're not in the best of the geographical location. We're ninety miles south of Dallas. Uh, well, Ennis will be closer, but uh, we're we're kind of in a rural area, which is becoming a little more appealing to some people, I think. So that's probably helping. But when I looked at how uh, with our hiring, because we really were struggling for a while, we needed probably four or five PTs, and it was like we were just at bat and zero. So I've done several things, actually practice promotions. You guys helped me with a, uh, a mail out a postcard and, and really uh, work, spent a lot of time with your team on developing that postcard and really realized uh, it's kind of like our target audience. They're the new grads coming out. A lot of them are Gen Zers, like they're into that balance work life kind of balance thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, the, the family focus, which is all great qualities are, they're kind of frustrating for people trying to hire because you're like, well, you need to think like the old school and just work, right? Like you're supposed to work 60 hours a week and uh, like our parents did, but th that's not a thing anymore. It's, it's different. And so you have to embrace that. So my postcards are more about like what the, the town that we're trying to pull them to, Corsicana, Fairfield, like attracting them, QR code that they can click and they get a little town, a, a tour of the town uh, to show them the highlights, like, but what we've been able, and we also polled all our um, PTs that work for us um, to help us, like what are the most appealing things of working here? And then also have videos for all my, about six of my new PTs, the fresh ones that we hired. And we did an interview with them and that's included on our website and also on our postcard where they can link to it. But it, it's people that look like them, that they're same age as them, mm -hmm. that are new PTs. And it's like, Neil, um, the simple question is, Neil, why do you love working at Lots? You know what? I love working at Lots because um, I feel like really feel supported by the owners. Uh, we have a lot of we work together. There's no ego. Uh, we have the teams approach where everybody we have multiple PTs that work together in teams. And so we can we kind of like work. We, we can use our brains together to help patients that are struggling. Um, you know, our, the flex scheduling that we've, we've kind of have to some degree is, is helpful. So basically, the goal with that is just to kind of target like what are they looking for? Because um, it's 
that's a challenge really with hiring new people, especially when you're trying to bring them to a geographical location that's not on their, you know, their bucket list to live in. You know, we're not like a Dallas or like I want because we have the people that when I want to live in Dallas, like, why do you want to live in Dallas? Oh, I just always want to live in Dallas. Like, okay, well, um, we have this incredible clinic that's pretty close to Dallas. You can work there and you could live and you can commute. So it's kind of helping them troubleshoot how they can work for us, but still maybe live that lifestyle. But yeah. we've also kind of defined like who are our people. So the people that usually work for us are typically they have families. Um, they enjoy rural, rural living. So they like to live, uh, you know, have some land and maybe have some animals or, or just enjoy hiking and being out boating, fishing, hunting, that kind of stuff. So, because I found if I don't, if I'm not strategic and who I hire, then they're not going to last long. Right. So it's not sense. just, it's not, it's not just about getting a warm body to, to see mm -hmm. a patient. Like it's more challenging when you're not just looking for a warm body or a PT with a pulse. I'm looking for a PT with a pulse that loves to be here, that shares our core values, that understands our mission statement. Um, and that is willing to, you know, have, has that humble confidence where they're not just so timid and meek, but they're, they're also not just all about ego. Mm -hmm. So, and th there's a lot of people out there that fit that mold, but we, if we get the right person and we get them in this location, man, they're going to shine and they're going to love living here and they're going to be here for a long time. So yeah. That's, yeah. That's and, but I, I think what you've done really well there is you've taken all those components and being able to really, again, showcase it within, um, your reviews, the way that your website looks, you know, the, the social media that you have. So when, when you do get scouted by uh, a potential uh, therapist out there, they look at all that stuff and then they start to say, wow, oh, yeah. this looks like That's an true. incredible place to work, right? They must have, yeah. you know, great experience with their patients. And it's, it's just different than the norm out there. Right. So it, it does give you that selling point to, uh, to potential. And one thing we, we try to do too with our, when I'm talking to somebody that's, uh, we're doing that we're doing that interview process. I really, I mean, we require them to do an onsite first. So I don't mm -hmm. just hire somebody that just without them actually seeing the meeting, I mean, yeah. they need to come hang out with us. And so they'll come spend a half day or a whole day. Usually we have a condo that we'll, we'll house them. They can stay in that for the weekend. It's pretty cool. It's on the lake. So it's kind of a neat place to hang out. So they kind of get a sense that they're able to kind of see the environment that they'd be living in and working in. Um, and get to kind of be in the community. Uh, and it's kind of cool in our communities since we have a fitness center, we have a um, lot fitness center, we have a lot of people that they have shirts everywhere. So if you go to Home Depot, you're going to see about 10 people with a lot fitness shirt on. <laughs> and that's been actually probably the best marketing for hiring people because I'll get these PTs. I had actually hired one like a, a couple months ago. And she's like, I see your name everywhere in the community. So <laughs> sometimes that is a, a great, when people are wearing your shirts out boy it's a, it, they're advocating for your services and, and people want to line up with that. So that was a big drawing point for her to come join us. So all those things kind of add up. It's funny. That's excellent. That's excellent. So David, um, any final words of advice for our audience out there? Well, I was making my notes because, you know, I tend to go on these little tangents here, but um, I think the big thing I had written down to <laughs> for my whole second. Um, written down was uh, I think we would have to keep in mind as much we, that we work for the patients. I think that's a big part in healthcare. We forget like we work for them and we should align with their needs first and focus on that. And I think if you stay true to that, then the rest of it just kind of falls in place. I mean, so that's kind of goes with that cater concept of connecting and assessing, but th those are all done because you really care about that person and you really want to help them. Um, and we also, it's our goal to figure out like, are we the best place for them? Cause there's sometimes the patients, you know, maybe PT is not the best for you right now. And the quicker I can figure that out and get you the right person, like that's a win too. And we need to recognize that. So I think, um, I think the big part is that, but also just, it's so easy to get burned out in this profession because we don't balance that, um, very well, that work-life balance. And I, I mean, that, that sounds, I don't know that the work-life balance ever really gets balanced. I, I heard a lecture one time and said, every part of your life, you're either going to be working more and less life down here. It, it's an ebb and flow. It, so there's never really the perfect amount. But the point is, is that you have to recognize that's one thing that we do with our, you know, our lunch and learns. And we talk a lot about like everybody kind of does a, not really a mental health check, but we we're constantly kind of checking on how's everybody doing? Are you keeping up with your notes? So it's just, it's basically you create a team where we all support each other 
And literally at the end of the day, and we got one person who's way behind their notes. Like I, I'll say, I can tell. I'm like, hey, look, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna help you. You go hide in that room for the next 20 minutes, catch up. We're gonna cover you. And I think that when you work in an environment that has that kind of family feel to it, mm -hmm. um, that's there's something that that's really amazing about that. And then yeah. patients see that too. Absolutely, yeah. And so you know, kudos to you, Dave. You and your team have done a fantastic job of really building out that wow patient experience. And it just pervades throughout the entire uh, practice there. So great job on that. Um, so thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. And I love that cater concept so everybody can uh, uh, connect with that. So again, that's uh, connect, assess. Assess, uh, treat, educate, educate, and reconnect. reconnect. Love it. Love yeah. it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that all with right. us. David. Really thank you, Neil. And uh, to all, all our right. listeners out there, wishing you much success in your practice. Thank you for listening to the Practice Marketing Podcast. Don't forget to get your free Practice Marketing Sample Kit at practicepromotions.net slash kit. Start 2024 off the right way by building marketing systems that automatically attract new patients from online. That's practicepromotions.net slash kit.